find what the enemy fears the most by what he's attacking. So if we can have eyes to see the gender confusion, the enemy doesn't want us to find out who we are. Because the minute that you and I find out who we are, things begin to change around us. Right? It, there's something in us. I mean, I wrote this down. Let me just read some stuff, okay? Our culture is very interested. I, I would say that I'm very interested at times, right, about discovering our individual identity. It seems like everyone's searching for something or someone to tell them who they are. I mean, we have all these different pers- I love personality tests. I love them. You know, Briggs, what's it called? The, uh, Myers-Briggs. I, I, I take them. I like them. I, it reveals things about myself. It helps me to... I love that type of stuff because I'm trying to find out more about who I am. That's not a, that's not a negative thing. But everybody's trying to find out where they belong, how they relate to the world. It seems it's in our primal desire or design to know who we are. We look for it in our parental relationship when we grow up. We, we, we look for it in social circles. We, we look for it in our careers. We look for it in our finances. We look for it in physical appearances. We seek it today, and we have its worse and worse every day. We seek it in our kids' successes. We're trying to find out, right? We're looking to the externals for something to identify us. So it's very important in this invisible world. We've been in this series called The Invisible War. And we've been talking about the tactics of the enemy, right? How we don't fight against flesh and blood. And we we looked at that. We we talked last week about how our greatest enemy is not the devil. Our greatest enemy is ourselves. So we need to learn how to do something with ourselves. We're calling stuff the devil, which is not devil at all. Actually, it's just an unrenewed mind. Jesus, listen, let me say something here real quick. Jesus didn't, he wasn't hyper, he wasn't hyper devil focused. He wasn't. He was more concerned about what the father was saying in the kingdom of God than what the devil was doing. But when the devil showed up, he pulled the trigger. Now, I'm not saying there's not an enemy, and I, I, you guys know that. We, we've talked about it in this series. But we need to start understanding our, we have to renew our mind to who we are. And there's a war going on. And listen, that's why the enemy's trying to keep you out of the word of God. How he's trying to keep you out of church. He's trying to keep you away from people. Why is he doing this? Because he doesn't want you to find out who you are. Amen. So the problem is that we got is an identity crisis. Just maybe, I wrote this down. Just maybe the next great awakening is actually this. An awakening to who we are. Because it seems like we're getting pigeonholed more and more and more. That listen, listen, this can't do it. Money can't buy it. It starts, money starts going out the window. What are we going to do when there's nothing else to turn to? You never wonder why they see miracles in Africa. You know why they see things in third world countries? Because they don't have anything else to turn to except for him. And maybe this is all maybe a big plan in order to get us to turn our eyes on Jesus and start believing him, knowing who we are, stepping into our identity and, and what God's called us to do. Who are you? How are you identifying? So, well, why is this so important? Why is the subject of identity so important? Why is it so important? Number one, it's this. It, 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 it connects us to our purpose. This is huge. you got to stay with me today. It, it connects me to my purpose. When I find out who I am, it starts giving me purpose for my life. Well, you say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, Adam, there was two reasons that Adam was made. Representation, relationship, and representation. That's why God created man. Relationship with him and relationship with others. And the second reason, that he would have somebody that would represent him in the world. So when I find out who I am... It releases me into destiny. It releases me into purpose. Number two, it sets life course. It sets life's course for me. One of the main decisions that you and I are needing to make, it comes back to your identity. When a situation, sin, right? Let's just say sin, (coughs) sin. Stop it now. Sin, sin is, it's it's that Greek word, hamartia. It's the Greek word hamartia. 
uh, uh, two words, ha and martus. And it actually means this. We've heard it say like, like you know, you missed the, missed the mark, right? And, and, and that is, it's accurate, but it's still not deep enough. The word sin or hamartia means not to be together with. It actually means this, to actually hit a totally different target than what you are designed to hit. So the enemy wants you to hit a target that you never, you weren't designed to hit that target. You were designed to hit this target. So sin looks very, um, sin will look very, uh, it, 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 it looks very, it's got flash to it. It feels good. I mean, no one is ever tempted to sin because, I mean, it feels good to sin. It feels good to get angry. Come on, somebody. You ever been angry and 10 minutes after you got angry, it, it, you, it was like, man, I should have never done that. Because it felt good to the flesh. Sin feels good. If not, no one would ever be tempted to do it. But the enemy is trying to get us to hit targets that are wrong. So what am I saying about life's course? When I know who I am, decisions start being made for me. But Listen, it's not, I don't have to be. It's a no-brainer anymore. That's not me. Well, that's not me. That's not who I am. That's not how I operate. Boom, it sets my life course. And the third reason why it's so important to understand your identity and this war and, and winning it is to, it affects our freedom and our wholeness. It affects our freedom and our wholeness. When I find out who I am, I start getting into freedom. When I start finding out who God's called me to be, it actually begins to free me and I begin to walk in a wholeness that I was purposed to walk in. Why? Because listen, Jesus is the true humanity. Check this out now. Jesus is actually shown as what it means to be human. The way that we respond many times is subhuman. So Jesus comes, getting an earth suit. We're getting ready to celebrate that Christmas, right? Before, but, for, but first, we've got to go through Thanksgiving. They're already starting to play Christmas music. And some of you in here today have your Christmas, and I don't want to see any hand for who are going to throw something at you. <laughs> you already got your Christmas tree up. Don't forget Thanksgiving. It's okay. Where am I at? Huh? Help me out. Jesus is my true idea. Okay. We're getting ready to celebrate Christmas, and it's... Um, we're celebrating God in the what? In flesh. It's the enfleshment. It's, it's the, the incarnation. What's Jesus? Listen, he just wasn't born to die. If that was the truth, if he was just born to die, then they should have killed him when he was a little baby when they were going through. Remember when? Huh? If it was just about that, then if it just was just about blood being shed for my forgiveness, which is totally important, I, it's, it's the pinnacle of the revelation. I, we're going there, but Easter, but Christmas has got a purpose. But between Christmas and Easter is a time frame. And Jesus is actually walking, and he's showing us who the Father is. He's, he's showing us how to be human, how to love people, and how to help people, and, and, and how you and I are called because he's the second Adam. So, so, so the revelation is more than just him on a cross, which is the pinnacle of the revelation of, of, a, of a person and God that would lay down his life for those that hate him, would, would, would put him on a tree. I get that. But don't forget he's also shown us what it's like to be a human. So sin tries to get you and I to be subhuman. Right? And, and what happens is it brings us into bondage. So everything is a consequence of our identity. Now, I'm going to turn here in, in Acts chapter 19. You can turn to your Bible uh, there in your Bible also if you got it. But I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. Acts chapter 19. And if you'll allow me to be able to spiritualize uh, this a little bit and, and give a, a revelation here. You guys have, have been here before with me, I'm sure. But Acts chapter 19, verse 13. <clears throat> and I want you to read here with me. So it's going to be in the New Living Translation, okay? It says this, A group of Jews was traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirits. 
They try to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation saying, I command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. So you can never operate by another person's revelation. You've got to have your revelation of who God is. You can't depend on my revelation. You can't depend on Mama's revelation. You can't, believe, you can't, you can't uh, depend on Papa's revelation. You've got to have your own revelation of who God is. And when you start in this invisible war, if you don't know who you are, listen here, it's going to be a bad day. I command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. Verse 14, seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. But one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but what? Who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on him, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence they fled from the house naked and battered. If you don't know who you are, the enemy will take advantage of you. If you don't know who you are, the enemy will overpower you. You've got to know who you are. The enemy takes advantage of people that don't know who they are. So we have to all the time be reminded of who we are. Because why? The world, is there's stuff coming at you all the time. I'm telling you, every problem is an identity issue. So if I don't know who I am, or I forget who I am, which I'll show you that in a second, because we can forget who we are, the enemy will overpower you. And he'll strip you of your inheritance and what belongs to you in Christ. It, it, listen, it's already established fact in Christ. But you and I have a choice whether we want to operate in that inheritance or not. You and I have an opportunity or have, have, a, uh, have a choice of how we're going to respond and how what we partake of. This past week I've been thinking about stuff and about and I was talking to some guys this morning and and you know so many times we let other things dictate our day. We let things have power over us. We let we let emotional emotions over overpower us and take advantage over us and begin to lord over us. Does things really have that? This is the question I ask me. Does these things really have that much power over my life that I'm actually, it's actually greater than what Jesus is to me or what Jesus says about me? Here comes a situation your way. Listen here, what is there there to do? It's trying to get you to change your view. Am I going to let the circumstances of life, I don't know what they are, whatever they are, am I going to let that thing determine my day, how I respond? The people that I'm going to come in contact with. How many people today are living emotionally driven lives? Lives because, listen, I'm not feeling right. Or I'm not feeling this. And I'm not feeling that. And I'm not feeling that. And you know what? I'm mad at the world. And I'm this. Listen, what you're saying is that is your Lord and not Jesus is your Lord. Come on, somebody. I'm not being to be mean, mean. But I'm telling you, I've been asking myself this question. What am I letting dictate my life? What am I letting actually determine my day and how I respond to people? And what I Listen, nothing should have that type of power in my life except for Jesus. And that is it. That is it. That should be the thing that brings actually everything in line for me. I've been thinking about it. But the problem is we're eating the wrong tree. Remember this now. Adam and Eve in the garden. We was there a little bit last week. They were in the garden. They ate from the wrong tree. Remember? What did it say about their eyes? Their eyes were what? And what were they open to? To see themselves. But when Jesus resurrected, remember that one on the road to Emmaus? Remember the guys on the road to Emmaus? Remember that one? And Jesus appears to them, starts walking with them. It says, man, they come to a, a split in the road, and Jesus was going to go one way, and the two disciples were going to go to another. They said, no, no, come on, come and stay with us. And they went to, to the house together, and they sat down, and the Bible says, Jesus took the bread, and he what? He, he blessed that bread, he broke that bread, and he gave that bread. And the Bible says their eyes were what? To see. See, whatever I'm feeding on determines what I'm seeing. See, if I'm feeding on the wrong tree, what happens is I start seeing myself. If I'm feeding on the right tree, all I see is him. 
That's good. That's, that's worth the price of mission right there. I don't know. We could all leave out here and be blessed by that one right there. What am I feeding on? It feels all right here. How many in here forget? Ever forget? Do you ever forget who you are? I mean, if I'm going to be the only one that I forget who I am sometimes, how about, come on. Uh, thank you. All you guys that did raise your hand, and I saw a few just got them up to the last minute. You guys are going to heaven. You know what? <laughs> Liars don't go to heaven. So all the rest of you are going to have an altar call here in a minute. We're going to get saved, all right? Because I think we've all forgot who we are. Now go with me to James chapter 1. I can see where this is going. It's not going to go very far today. But that's all right. I always got next week, right? This, this message has grown a lot on me over the last few weeks. James chapter 1. Let's look here together. Verse 21, it says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word. Actually, let's go back up here to verse 19. Sorry. So then, my beloved brethren and sistren, let every man be what? Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted what? So you've got to receive the word, which is able to save your what? Soul. Now, this is not talking. He's talking to believers here. This is not talking about, we, we say that a lot of times, right? The Lord, or boy, the Lord saves souls today. Well, the Lord saves my soul every single day. Now, I understand what we mean by that. We're saying people are getting born again. But listen, when you got born again, your spirit got born again. <coughs> but your soul is being renewed. So I'm receiving the implanted word which is able to save or to heal or restore my soul. I'm receiving it. That way I don't, the above, I'm not going to get into the wrath of, wrath of man. I'm not going to get angry and I'm going to show myself. People are angry today. You ever notice that? Everybody angry. Everybody angry. Everybody just mad. Everybody trying to find somebody to take out their, uh, take it out on and taking it out on people. And, and it's, what's going on? It's, it's something going on down deep. We're eating from the wrong tree. And all we're seeing is ourself and our inconveniences. And, 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 and this is not the way that Christianity should be. The Bible says you've been crucified. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but, the, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I died January 31st, 1997 in my bedroom when I gave my heart to Jesus. There was a death that happened and there was a resurrection into life. I died that day. The old me died that day. I'm no longer that guy. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Jesus, old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. I belong to him, and he's my Lord. He's my Lord. Save your souls. Verse 22, but be doers of the word. This what you're receiving? You're receiving word today. Man, the enemy fly, fly around. He, the enemy's, the enemy, you know the enemy flies around trying to take out seed out of your life? He trying to come get you distracted this morning? Trying to get you to check out of that Applebee's already? Right? Because why? He's coming to steal the word. He said, be doers of now the word that you're receiving. You just can't just sit here and listen to messages. you gotta start, You got to start applying the word to your life. Be doers of the word and not what? Not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So you can sit right here. Well, I went to church this morning. I checked my box. But never put it into practice. Never becomes your filter. Never becomes the thing by which you live by. And your, the Bible calls that deceit. The Bible calls that deceit. Now look here in verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, not using it as the filter, right? 
Look what the Bible says. <clears throat> he is like a man observing his natural face in a what? Stop here a second. You've never seen the real you. You have never seen you. I see you, but you've never actually got outside of your body and looked at you. You are only believing a what? An image or a reflection of what you see in a mirror. You've never seen the real you on the inside of you. You have to trust a reflection. Stay with me now. It's like his natural man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and he goes away and immediately what? Forgets what kind of what? He forgets his identity. What kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty. And he continues in what he's looking at. And is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. See, what are you saying, Pastor Paul? This is your mirror. You've never seen the real you naturally. The only way you can find out your true identity is find it right here. That's why when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, you guys remember that, right? Remember the devil came and tempted Jesus? Well... Right? What was it all about? Two-thirds of his temptation was this. If you are the Son of God. Two-thirds of it. Now, Jesus, he whipped the devil in the wilderness. He comes out, the Bible says, in power. And he goes into the synagogue. Remember the story? And he walks into the synagogue... And this is all, this is, this is just against protocol because in Jewish synagogues there was prescribed readings. Right? And he walks to the front. A, they don't like him anyway. They don't, they hate him. And he walks in, busts the place up, walks to the pulpit. And this, you can imagine, you, you know those big old huge family Bibles that are turned to the special scripture? Right, that meant something to grandma and grandpa. He takes the thing. And the Bible says this. He found the place that it was written. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To heal the brokenhearted. To set at liberty those that are bruised and oppressed. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And Jesus takes and he says this day this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. Jesus found the place he had been for 30. Listen from, from the age of 12 years old from all the way up to 30 years old. We don't hear anything about Jesus. But I'm telling you what he was doing. He was finding out who he was. And he found the place. You've got to find who you are in the scripture. Because when the enemy comes knocking, you better know who you are. You better know it. Why? If not, he's going to come and whip you. He's going to come and he's going to end up stripping you. He's going to strip you of your inheritance. Are you guys with me this morning? Come on. Who are you? Who are you identifying as? Who are you identifying with? Well, I identify with this. So many people take on tags about themselves. You're this, and you're that, and you're that, and you're this, and you're this. No, no, no. That's not who I am. That may have been a part of my bi biography, but it's not a part of my identity. It might have been a part of my past, but it's not a part of who I actually am. I'm this, I'm that. And we do that stuff, and we take that stuff, and we, we, we label ourselves. Well, this is my anxiety. Well, the last time I checked, it wasn't your anxiety. I'm not telling you that you just can't say it, that I am anxious. I said, don't take it as your own. Well, it's just my anxiety. I can, hold on a second, whose anxiety is it? Come on, you're preaching. Well, it's just my depression. Whose depression is it? Well, it's just my addiction. No, 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 it's not your addiction. That belongs in another kingdom, not in this kingdom. Hey, come on. I'm not telling you to deny issues. I'm not saying that at all. But 
quit taking it as your identity. The Bible says, let the weak say what? I am strong. The minute you and I start agreeing with the, with, with the negative, and it, it becomes a part of you. If you and I continue to confess that kind of junk over our lives, you'll walk right into it. It's framing your world. Amen. Well, that's a bunch of, well, whatever, you can call it whatever, but I'm just saying, it's about, this is what the Bible says. I'm looking at a different mirror. Right. Amen. I don't know, listen, I'm looking at somewhere different. Yeah. My mirrors, I don't know what you're looking into. Are you guys all right? Phew, don't forget who you are. I said, don't forget who you are. Because why? Situations come to part of you into a vessel you were never created to be. That negativity, that bitterness, that unforgiveness is pouring out. Listen, you were never created for that. You guys all right here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, don't be conformed to this world, but be what? Come on, say say it. But be what? Transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind that you can prove what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Check this out now. He says, don't be conformed to this world. That word conformed means pressure from the outside. He said, don't be the pressure that's coming against us. Don't say there's not because there are. Don't be conformed to that. But let the pressure, transformation, metamorpho is that word, metamorpho or metamorphosis, be transformed. That's an inside out. He said the pressure on the inside, let it begin to shape and form you. You guys all right? I'm talking about your identity today. What is your identity? What is identity anyway? It's an individual sense of who they are and their values. It's their distinguishing characteristics or personality of a person. It's being the same one as described. I like this. It's who you are or believe yourself to be is your identity. Who you are and who you believe to be. I'm going to say some words today, right? Because identification forms or shapes your identity. Let me say it again. Identification forms or shapes your identity. What is to be identified? What is identification? It means to be joined closely to something. So my identifications or what I'm joined to actually is the thing that identifies me. My identifications or what I'm joined to identifies me. Let me say this word, Michael Jordan. What's the next thing? Basketball. His identity is hooked to his identification. If I said Martin Luther King Jr., what would you say? Hey. Civil rights movement. Because what you're so close, associated closely with is what identifies you. When I say the church, the first thing that we need to be identified, my identification, what, it, what, what I should I be joining closer to is Jesus. And then when the name Jesus is mentioned, the church. So Jesus comes to this earth, he identifies with us so we could identify with him. I love C.S. Lewis's quote. The son of God became a man to enable men to become what? The son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. What do you identify with? What are you identifying with? How do you see yourself? If you see yourself as worthless. If you see yourself as not good enough. People do that. If you see yourself as a failure. You closely associate with those things. It begins to identify you. Well, Pastor Paul, I listen. I, I you know, I've got a struggle. No, 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 no. I get it. I get it. But it's not who you are. 
Now, there's three forgers of identity. Three identity forgers. Number one, it's family and society identity. What do you mean? This is, this is DNA. You know, your long nose, your big ears. We can't change that. I wish when we all come to Jesus, we'd, we'd look just, it changed something, make us all look a little better. Right? This is family and society identity. So the DNA, genetics is here, but family upbringing. How about this one? Good and bad. No doubt if I mentioned something about your family, it probably would trigger people in this room. Because there's been something that has shaped and forged an identity. What we're exposed to in our society on an everyday basis can shape our identity. That's why we got to have a true north. That's why there has to be absolute truth. In our society today, there's no absolute truth. So everybody makes their own truth up. If there's no true north, where are we going? You're lost. Society is trying to form us, our experiences in life, stuff that's gone on. Number two, our in Adam identity. Our, our in Adam identity. Now, let me say this real quick. If you're in Christ, no longer in Adam. In Adam, right, and again, we've all been affected or infected, I will say that, by the fall of man. All of us. Romans 5, 12. Look what it says here. I know this is, seems like maybe elementary, but we need to understand this to understand our identity. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. It says this, Therefore, just as through one man... Sin entered the world. And death through what? Now notice what was passed on to man. And thus what? Death spread to all men. Because all sinned. See, in the beginning, sin led to death. Now, death leads to sin. Jesus did not come to make Bad people, good. He came to bring dead people to life. Let me say this again. He didn't come to correct behavior. He came to, cor to correct a condition. And we're all about behavior modification. If I can just do better. If I could read my Bible enough. If I could pray a little more. That's not the way this operates. That's a deception. People say to me, well, I'll get saved. I'll get saved when I can clean X and Y. You're never going to get there. You'll, never, you'll just trade one habit for another habit, a little cleaner habit. People that get out of pornography. If you don't watch out, you know what? They'll get into, it'll get into gambling. We got a major issue uh, going on in our society. I don't know about I, recently. I'm, there was teachers. I don't know if you guys saw this in the news or not, but there was these teachers in another. Uh, uh, these teachers in a. I can't remember where it was at. What what state it was? They they got. They I guess there's this thing called fans only. Maybe some of you maybe know this. Fans only. You can go there and people pay money to see new pictures. This teacher she made one million dollars through fans only. There's somebody, on the, I thought that, there's somebody on the other end of this thing paying money to look at a nude woman. What's the problem? It's, listen, well, we're going to fix that. They don't ever fix it. That's why you can never legislate morality. You can never do it. I'm all for, man, legislation with, with the board. We're going we're gonna, to, you know, life is precious and we need to protect it. But it's never going to stop abortion. Because why? You can never legislate morality. You can help it. You can shape it. You can actually put a keyhole for people to say, this is the way we got to go. But listen, people are going to find a way to kill a baby, whether there's a law or not. People are going to find a way to have war, whether it's, whether it's it doesn't matter. Because you cannot legislate this stuff. 
because it's a heart problem. For sin was passed, but because, because of one man's sin, death came. And because death came, now all men now have a propensity now to sin. So what do we need? We need a heart transplant. We need to be born again. This is what Jesus meant. He that hath the Son has life, not death. He that does not have the Son does not have life. They have death. I need to be born again. I know it's simple. I get it. But I'm trying to get you to see that you're a new creation. So death entered the human condition, and death is a state, right? It's a state that has to be corrected. Look at this at John 3, 36. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. 1 John 5, 11. Life, the Bible says life is in his Son. So the problem is not with sin. The problem is with death. Sin is the fruit of the separation. The state we are in without Christ, sinners sin. The problem is with death, not with sin. This is why Jesus said, Do not marvel that I said to you that you must be born again. You don't have an option without the Spirit. You can change the furniture around in your house, but it's still the same house. You need a new house. You've got to be born again. We don't have an option. Because of salvation now, we have an option. You've got the Spirit. The Spirit lives on the inside of you. Now there's a choice. Now, all of a sudden, I'm, not, I'm, I'm no longer in death. I have everlasting life. I have the life of God. I have the Spirit of God. And now, He's given me. He comes to convince me. He comes to convict me. He comes to lead me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Why? Because the Spirit that now lives in me, I've passed from death unto life. Amen. I'm no longer dead. I am alive. Yeah. Prior to Christ, I was dead in my trespasses and my sin. I was dead what do i need i needed a resurrection and when i committed my life to jesus the bible says the holy spirit takes up residence and i become a temple of the holy spirit he now lives with me and now i don't have to be doing all of that i have an option but this identity, it forms me. Right? Which leads me to this one. Which is my new identity in Christ. I leave the Adams family. And I get into his family. I just described some of your families. Especially Cousin Ed. Are you guys getting this? I know it seems simple, but we don't really think about this stuff much. And we don't talk about it a whole lot because we think everybody knows it. And I can't be held. I need to. Un we, if I'm going to teach you, because next week I'll teach you more. But listen, I can't teach you about who you are unless you understand where your origin's from. I, if you don't know who your father is, Ancestry.com, right? Every, I mean, I want to do that. Uh, but who's ever who's done Ancestry.com? Who's done it? it? Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? They send you a swab. They you know do a DNA. They send you all your stuff. But you can find out a lot of stuff about your life. People that's been adopted. Think about this a second. They've been adopted. They don't know much about their medical history. So their their origin gives them information that's going to help them. Am I making sense here to you? 
See, but if I understand my origin, and I understand who my father is, I now start understanding more about myself than I knew before. All I knew was broke, busted, and disgusting. All I, but listen, the Bible says there, therefore, if any man beware, in Christ, he's a what? A new creation. What? Old things have what? And all things what? You guys are work people. Somebody came here one time. They said, you know what stood out to me? The whole church knows the word. I said, yes. They finish it. One preacher, they finish the, they finish the sin, but they finish the scripture before I'm ever done with it. Yeah, that's what's good. So I lead the Adams family. I join the family of God. So listen now. I, I, we'll, we'll land a plane in a second. Jesus, not a second, but a few minutes. <laughs> Jesus equates our salvation experience to a rebirth or a new DNA. Can I show you one? 2 Peter 1 4. Look at this one. Oh boy, I'm going to end up over in 2 Corinthians. Yeah, yeah. Which have been given by which, he's talking about Jesus, by which, this salvation, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious, what? That through these promises, you may be partakers of the what? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You are a partaker of his divine nature. Everybody say DNA. When I got born again, divine nature applied. I'm a partaker of the divine nature. We mean partaker. It means I participate in it. This is what the word partake means. It means to have fellowship, to be in companionship, to participate as a partner. This is one of the great mysteries of our faith, that God shares his nature with us. We are given birth by the Holy Spirit to be God's true sons and daughters because every father imparts his DNA into his natural children. So when you got born again, Jesus said you've got to be born again. He equates it to a rebirth. Therefore, your father imparts his DNA, his characteristics, his nature on the inside of you. Therefore, you've got peace. You've got joy. You've got love. You've got self-control. It's in there. The Spirit of God lives on the inside of us. His character and his nature is living on the inside of us. Don't say you don't have it. You got the, You are a partaker of his divine nature. You're free. Well, how can I say it? Because I'm free on the inside. Because Jesus lives on the inside. The Spirit makes me free. Whew. Dear Lord, can we see it? I pray this morning that you would have eyes to see this. Because this will change your life. You'll stop identifying with your past. You'll stop identifying with your, your, your failures. Your defeats. You'll start identifying with that affair that you had three or four or five years ago that you that you that you uh, uh, that you were involved in. You'll start seeing you. I, I I went to God, but I'm still living in the guilt. I'm still living in the condemnation. I'm still living in this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I get it. I get it. Go before the Father. Listen. Confess that thing. Get it out in the open. And listen here. Let's move on. Amen. With the hurt and pain I've caused my family. Listen. You've got to leave it in the past. Know who you are. So many people, man, are defeated and down. Listen, why? Because they, they're living in condemnation and guilt from something that's happened 25 years ago. Stop it. You are a partaker of the divine nature. The characteristics of God, the nature of God is in you. This is what the Bible calls image. Therefore, let us make man in our what? He's not talking about a physical appearance. He's talking about his characteristics and who he is that we carry to our world. I need to know this. Why? It's determining my life's course. It's determining how I live. It's actually releasing me into freedom and wholeness. Freedom and wholeness. It's attached to the way you see yourself. 
as a man thinketh, so is he. I'm going to land this plane, but I need you to go to 2 Corinthians 5. We can't leave here without looking at this one. We'll go. And I'll pick it up here next week so you can come back next week because the next week is it's better. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We quote this one, but we don't go up. We need to understand this one. But I want to start in verse 13. We just quote 17. But 13, Apostle Paul said, If I am crazy for God, for if we are beside ourselves, it's for God. But if we're calm and collective, it's for you. For the love of Christ, what's it do? It compels us because we just judged us that if one died for all, then what? See, Jesus is the second Adam. All of humanity is inside of Jesus. All of you. People aren't going to hell, listen, because of their, because of their sins. It's the rejection. Because Jesus has done, done taking care of all of sin. Hebrews says that you've been forgiven past, present, and future. You weren't even around when Jesus died. But he forgave you. He's already forg he forgave you. 2,000 years removed from the cross. Already taken place. We're thinking, God, we're thinking all the time that God's like doling out forgiveness just on the basis of whether you, you do something right or right. Like where I come to him, I'm going to dole out my forgiveness today. I'm going to dole out all my... He's always forgiving. He, it's not like that he decides to forgive you just in that moment. He forgave you through Christ 2,000 years ago. Uh, I got go, I get myself in a hole here. I don't want to go there. That if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for who? What is the root of all sin? Selfishness. Selfishness. Did you know live, live longer? No longer for, for themselves. But for him. Who died for them and rose again. Verse 16. Therefore. From now on. This is my prayer. From now on. From today on. From now on. We, re we regard no one according to the what? Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no Longer. Therefore. Why is it therefore? Find out because you just had to read up above it. Because you're not to know yourself after the flesh. You are to know yourself after the spirit. Amen. You are not to know yourself after your flesh. You are not to know yourself after failures. You are not to know yourself after defeats. You are to know yourself according to your true identity, according to what the mirror says. Come on. And what the Spirit says. He said, we thus, listen, if you are not to look at someone, this will help you and I evangelize people that, don't, that you don't agree with. I'm going to know them after something different than what I'm seeing. When someone gets in here and they get born again, but yet they're still having struggles. I can't see somebody according to the flesh. i got to see them according to the Spirit. As a pastor, I put this right here into motion a lot because people come and they talk to me about issues. They talk to me about problems. I, I see things at times, but I can't see you according to your flesh. I got to see you for who you truly are in Christ. And all of a sudden, I can start pulling gold out of you. I start pulling destiny out of me. And I hear this. I see it. I pull future out of you, and it begins to propel people out of the miry clay. It begins to pull people out of their junk. Why? Because it's who they are. 
But what we're doing, we're all the time looking at fruit. We're fruit inspecting. Oh, well, this is this and this. If I'll get just focused on who I am and the root, the fruit starts taking care of itself. The bad starts falling off and the good starts coming. Because Jesus didn't come to make me good. He come to resurrect me and give me life. And because of that resurrection life, good comes. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Spirit, new. Old things have passed away and all things become new. Now look in verse 18. We never get here either. I don't think I even gave you that. I don't know. But verse 18 says this one. You pull it up there for me. Sorry. I need you to see it. <laughs> Close it down. Verse 18. I can read it. I can read it right here. But Now, let's just stop right here at this comma. Now, all things are what? What all things? Back up to verse 17. Go back up to verse 17 real quick. The all things new. They come from God. You've been born of God. You carry the DNA of God. It's in your spirit. That's your identity. And you're not to know yourself after the flesh. But only after the spirit. And what the word of God says. I promise you. I promise everybody in this room. If we will get that. And look in that. I promise you. Things will change. Your marriage will change. Come on, your relationships will change. Your ha habits and your hang-ups will start to change. Why? Because you're finding out who you are. There's an invisible war. And the war's for your identity. Now, you've got to come back next week because I'm going to show you the main, the main culprit. The main culprit of why we don't walk in victory. Because the enemy comes and lies to us about something. You guys all right? You all right? Love the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, come on. Let's, let's play something. Won't, won't the praise team come this morning? Won't everybody come? Oh, praise team. Close your Bible. This, this message has revolutionized my life. It revolutionized my life. It's revolutionized my life. And I know it will revolutionize yours. I know. And I'm just coming to the place, and I, I'm, I ain't there yet. <laughs> this week, man, it was on me about what am I letting decide my life. What, what am I letting decide how I respond? What, what, uh, 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 what am I letting, what am I letting uh, dictate my emotions? What, what am I letting get, make me mad? Because what happens is the enemy comes and starts poking on you. Right? And what he does, check this out now. What he does, he starts poking on you. And you know what he's trying to find? A spot in you that's sore. And once he finds the sore spot, he's going to continue to poke. The last time I checked, when I went to a funeral and there was a body there, you could go and pinch that body and what? Not that I've ever done that. But, <laughs> but if I did it, would anything happen? Because it's what? For you died. The scripture says you died and your life is hidden in Christ. So when the devil gets a rise out of me, I need to be paying attention because it's something I probably need to look at. Has anybody ever, come on, this past week, come on, anybody got it? Come on, come on. So what it is, instead of getting down on yourself, won't you say, well, thank God, I know now what I got to work on because that right there is going to get shored up. That's how God turns all things together for our... <laughs> Stand to your feet, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Not going to let something determine my day.
Come on, we're not going to let somebody, something turn, determine my day. I'm not going to let anymore. I'm not letting this. You know, listen, grace is released as we respond. And we're going to provide space today for you to respond. If you need prayer today, we want you to come. We're going to sing a song today. And listen, the altar's open. And I want to meet you here because I'd like to pray for you. Man, you find yourself a struggle in a struggle today. I'd love to agree with you. I just want to open up space this morning just for you to come and respond by God's grace. Because grace is released when we respond in faith. Amen? And man, God, listen, we got to get back to the place. we got to quit caring what everybody thinks about what's going on in my life. It doesn't matter. The people that are sitting there looking at it, they got problems themselves. They're just not brave enough to respond. I'm not brave enough. Now, I'm not making this happen. But we're here this morning. And we're going to worship together just for just a moment. So let's sing a song. And if you need to respond today, maybe you're struggling with your identity. Maybe you need prayer for healing. I don't care what it is. I want to agree with you today. I want to pray for you. So let's sing today. Come on, let's do that. Praise God. Amen. We're going to open the altar up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Me and my house, we're going to serve you for me and my house. You'll get the praise for me and my house. We're going to love you always. As the Holy Spirit moves you. For me and my house, we're going to worship for me and my house. You'll get
family here real quick with me. You know, and I, I know this this couple, you know, special needs children, right? Um, there's challenges, right? There's large challenges. And uh, we don't see Addie according to her any disability. That's not the way we see Addie, for sure. But, you know, the family is affected, right? And I, I know they came up for personal prayer, but I know this couple, and I know they trust us as a church. I want you guys to release your faith this way towards this couple. Because sometimes we forget of the struggles behind the scene that no one knows, right? We, we, only, we only see what we see here or we know, right? But no one knows the weight. And um, I, I want you guys just to release your faith this way today for this couple. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, let him sense the strength of the Lord right now. Let him sense the strength of the Lord right now. And I just speak right now for a grace to be released into you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we're praying. I know they pray. I know they believe you. And Lord, we saw Addie come huge strides. She held a conversation with me the other day. I remember when they come through these doors, God, that wasn't, that wasn't something that could be done. But Lord, we know, God, there is struggles. And we don't, and we don't deny those struggles. Jesus, you told us to face mountains and speak to mountains. So right now, I just speak bravery and courage into you. And, and, and don't future trip. Stop future tripping. Stop living 20 years from now. Stop living in 10 years from now, five years from now, even in three years from now. No, no, no. We're going to live, be present. You guys are great parents. Mandy, you are a great mommy. You are a great mommy. Anybody would, would experience frustrations. So right now, in Jesus' name, we just speak right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For a peace that passes all understanding be released in Jesus' name. This home would be full of peace. And we pray for Addie today. Lord, she's frustrated because she's trying to express herself. She's frustrated, God, because she, she's, she, she knows it's inside of her, but she can't express it. And I'm praying, God, work there. Work there first. And then work in this couple and give them grace. Lord, I pray for your grace and your peace and your strength. Lord, I thank you for the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. You're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I thank you today as they made a step. The grace is being released. And, Lord, they are going to be able to see it with different eyes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The blessing of Addie. The blessing of the Davises. They are a blessing. So God, we thank you right now. We release it as a church toward them in Jesus' name. Feel the strength of the Lord. Feel the grace for the race. Sense it. Lord, something's changing. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. You got something you want to share? Sing it all. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. For me and my house. We're going to serve you. We're going to serve you. We're going to love you. We're going to serve you. For me and my house. For me and my house. We're going to serve you for me and my house. Come on. We'll get for me and my house. We're going to love you.
can't make changes without Him. Oh, you can make changes on willpower alone for a while, but you'll always revert. So if you say to me today, Pastor Paul, I need to be saved, would you raise your hand real quick across the room? Anybody at all? Going once, we're going to scan the room. Maybe you're a lost son or daughter today. You're saved, born again, but you've just lost your way and you want to actually say, today I'm returning back to Father's house. Today I'm going to, I'm going to serve God with all of my heart. I'm tired of serving my ways and I'm going to go with His way. Would that be you in the room today? I'm saved, but I just need to recommit, rededicate. Anybody at all? Lord, we thank you for the work that you're doing in this house. Thank you, God, that we're, there's an awakening to our identity. Thank you for the revival of identity. Thank you, God, for what you've done in all of our lives today. God, we leave out of this room, God, today encouraged, knowing that we are sons of God. For as many as received him, to, he, to them, he gave us the power to be called children of God. I am a child of God. I am a son. You are a daughter. You are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And his DNA is on the inside of you. We are partakers of the divine nature. So, Lord, today, we thank you. We leave out of this room encouraged. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to shout this today. I am a child of God. What a great revelation. You guys have a great Sunday. Count of three. I am a child of God. One, two, three. I am a child of God. God bless you. Have a great, great, great Sunday.